So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I learned about doing research as a PhD. Welcome back to Miss Me's channel. This is Miss Me. In my channel, I do vlog videos, lifestyle videos, makeup videos, and academic videos. I recently earned my doctorate degree, and recently a lot of my friends were contacting about um, some research advice for new doctoral students or for master level students. And previously, I also had some undergrad students seeking help in terms of their research projects. So I was thinking maybe making a video about what I learned about doing research may be helpful to you. And also thank you so much for your comments in my previous academic related videos. I read every single one of my comments and thank you so much. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I learned about doing research as a PhD. I hope this video can be helpful to you, whether if you're a high school student doing a research project or if you are a PhD student who's doing your doctorate degree, I hope you can find some value in this video. Okay, the first thing I learned about research is to read and read and read. I think being a researcher, a large part of my job is actually to read, to actually dig into the literature. By read, I'm not saying just read Wikipedia, but read actual research articles about the recent studies. For example, one example could be uh, during the recent pandemic, we were talking about what was the medicine that was used in uh, treating the new virus. And as a researcher, of course, I went to the medical record and all of these studies are actually open to public. So I can actually go into every single study to see their study design and the result. But the reason why we need to read, read, read is that you don't know what you don't know if you don't read. First of all, by reading a lot in your field, you can actually identify what we learned in the past in our field of study. And then we can identify the gaps that we actually don't know. As we know, the more we know, the more we know that we don't know, so we can find answers to the things that we don't know. Oh, it's like a tongue twister. Dedicate one to two hours of your day every day just to dig into your field of study and read and read and read. I know it's... <laughs> very weird and initially you may read really really slow especially if you just started doing your master's or phd but a lot of people have been asking me in the past how to improve my reading how to read fast the simple answer is just to read more the more you read the more you develop a habit that helps you to read and you can read faster and faster so every time we know that we need to do a project a research project is to actually think of what project we need to do please comment down below if you are struggling with it because it's definitely one of my biggest struggles doing my PhD. I think all of my coursework went really smoothly until I need to commit to a research project for my doctoral dissertation, which took me a long time to finally commit to one research topic. Thing. Every time you're thinking about what you want to do for a course project, for uh, undergraduate thesis, for a master level thesis, for a doctoral thesis, um, the main thing to think about is what is your contribution to the field? What does your project contribute to whether the theoretical discussions or the practical implications? So think about what's the implication of your study and reverse engineer about which topic you want to explore. So just in our everyday life, think about what are the social issues you want to study, and then you read more about this issue and think about what we know, what we don't know, and think about how your study can help us uh, to progress as a society, help us to progress in a scientific world. So even like for high school projects, so think about like how your project can help you and everyone to improve your knowledge in certain area. And what's the implication? Why do we need to learn more about it? what contribution are we making, whether to further our knowledge, whether to improve our practice, whether to actually um, build a theory around it, and whether to improve the methodology of the research. Just think about what are the implications of your study and reverse engineer to see whether it's worth it to pursue the topic. Um, number three actually is something I learned the hard way, I guess, because every time I think about a topic, somebody always tells me, hey, it's been done. There's nothing unique about your study. Well, I think it goes back to the reading, is that your study should be unique. Um, you shouldn't be doing whatever somebody else is doing. If you want to do a research project over something that somebody already did, there is no real use of your study. And 
there is no uniqueness of your study. So either try to pursue a topic that was never been explored or pursue a topic that was explored with a new method or with a new sample or with something that's innovative. You study the same thing but differently with innovative ideas. So it's either you have innovative ideas or if you're studying something that already been studied but with a new method, with a new innovative techniques. So just try to think about what's unique about your study instead of replicating somebody else's study. Number four, your study design is the key. I think a lot of times people were struggling a lot with what data analysis they want to proceed even before they design the study. But actually the study design is very, very important. It's actually the most important thing. You have to think about your theoretical framework, what actually informs your study, and you have to think about what type of data you need to collect and how you collect the data. Just think about it. If you already collect the data and when you're analyzing data, you realize, wait, the study design is terribly flawed. So, but you already committed, you already collected the data, you already made the effort and it's too late to change it. So similarly, if you submitted a, either a coursework paper or to, or to a publication, the thing is you can always change your analysis. You can always revise your writing, but if the data has been collected, if the study design has been done, it's almost impossible to go back to change it. So study design is the key. You can always revise your analysis, do different sets of analysis, but if your data is seriously flawed, then there's really nothing you can do after you collected the data. So think about the study design carefully before you um, proceed your data collection is very important. Tip number five is to use previously validated instruments. I've seen a lot of my students previously, they used survey in their course project. I've also seen uh, colleagues and friends who use different instruments um, such as experimental tasks, assessment tasks in their previous studies. Um, it's always better to use a previously validated instrument, whether if it's a survey questionnaire, whether if it's a um, assessment tasks, because there are definitely times, and this happened to me, is that I used a survey and later I realized and one of the questions is double barreled. So I cannot go back to change it, but because the instrument was not validated before and this flaw will actually impact my overall study. So here's the thing, always try to use instrument that was previously used by previous researchers with permissions, of course, or you can do a pilot study to validate your own instrument. But try to pilot your instrument always before you actually do it. Based on my experience, a newly developed instrument is always seriously flawed. It's always impossible just to have one instrument and it's like so successful. It usually goes through the process of validating, revising, and then validation again, and try it out, pilot testing, and then revise it again. So try to use previously used um, instrument or you can do a particular project to pilot it yourself but usually it takes effort but always be prepared always try to find what has been used and it also validates your study as well the sixth experience is actually also interesting because I mainly do quantitative analysis and mixed methods and I think a lot of people ask me like about fancy statistical analysis, which is actually very nice to learn, but fancy analysis may not always help. It almost always comes down to your actual research questions and your theoretical framework. So always keep in mind that um, your analysis should answer your question. Don't just throw in fancy techniques analysis, even if it doesn't really go with your question. And I've seen a lot of people do that. And I myself, when I first learned about statistics, I was like, I want to do this and this and this for my study. But then my professor was like, what's your research question? Like, if your research question does not require you to do that, it's basically meaningless. So again, think about what your research questions are, what you really want to know, and what your data allow before you make decisions about which fancy analysis you want to use. Number seven is also a very hard lesson for myself. It is to think innovatively and plan practically. I know it's like so hard. It's like such a hard lesson. Um, I remember when I was doing my research proposal and everything, I thought about great ideas. Like it's great ideas. It's very innovative. I love my initial dissertation proposal. But then if I actually proceed with that, 
I probably will be still in graduate school at this moment. So there are a lot of things that you can do, but there are also other things practically it's kind of difficult. So always try to think what innovations we can do with our research project, try to plan sophisticated um, study design, but at the same time, also plan practically to see which are actually practical to finish to achieve your goals, whether to graduate, whether to get a good grade in your course. Uh, don't kill yourself just because you want to achieve that sophistication and at the end it's not practical. But definitely keep in mind that we're all bound by practical limitations. Always think in ideal world but plan knowing that there are practical limitations. The next experience is that after you finish your research projects, there's usually a presentation, either a course paper or publications and things like that. So when you are doing your work, always keep in mind about who are your audience? Who are you communicating your research work to? Whether it's to your professor to get a good grade, whether it's to a academic journals, whether it's to the actual stakeholders to let them know, oh, based on our findings, these are things that you can do to improve so and so. So with different types of audience, you want to communicate differently. For example, if it's a course project that's actually connected to a particular course, you want to cite what you learned in the course because your professor is expecting to hear that, oh, I learned so and so and so and so from your class. And usually it brings us a huge satisfaction when I know that, oh, my student actually learned and applied what we taught in class. So think smartly. And similarly to different journals, a study can be published in different journals with different focus. So think about what's the focus of your journal. What matters more is either the methodology or the topic or the theory. Similarly, if you're presenting to the stakeholders where you can actually have practical implications of the results, try to think as your audience, how can you make your results and findings meaningful to them is the key instead of just saying what you're proud of about your project. Just think about what they are looking for and hearing your research project. My experience number nine, admit your limitations. I know, like I think going into this PhD studies, I always try to find whether there's this perfect research that we can do, there's this perfect research design, perfect study, but it's not always possible. Actually, as far as I know, every study has its limitations. Um, but what we could do is to reduce the number of limitations we have and try to be more sophisticated and try to be as much sophisticated as possible. But admit the limitations of your study will help your audience to interpret your findings with caution. Um, it is more responsible things to do. It's more realistic. And also do not overclaim or overgeneralize your results. Um, just because you found something in this particular sample doesn't mean that it applies to everybody in the general public. Don't make overclaim. Don't generalize your findings to everyone unless your sample actually represents every single one person. So there is no absolutely confident in interpretation of research results. Always admit that and always try to be a responsible researcher and let your audience know that, yeah, you can generalize the results to a certain extent, but not to every single one and do not overclaim um, in your writing as well. The last one I want to talk about is collaborations. Um, it's the best thing about doing research is to collaborate with intelligent, smart, passionate researchers in the same field. A lot of times we have an idea and we're kind of self-conscious about whether if people steal your ideas and a lot of times it happens but try to collaborate with researchers um, can help you to improve the quality of the project and also it really makes the whole experience more joyful and more social i think research is at the end of the day a social practice so one thing that I learned that before you collaborate with anyone, just to put words ahead of time, just to tell them, hey, um, this is my idea. Uh, I wonder if you want to be the second author and I will be doing 75% of the work. I'll be in charge of this. I need your help in so and so. So you will be doing the 25% of the work. Um, if you are interested, let me know and we'll talk more about the specific topic about what we're wanting to do. So in that case, you communicate your expectations before you start like selling out your ideas and after this person is on board, basically you sign an oral agreement. There's not going to be conflict about who's stealing whose ideas. Um, and yeah, just 
basically always negotiate beforehand, um, establish that collaborations, expectations, and usually, I think overall, I have a really good time collaborating with other awesome researchers, so I really encourage you guys to do so as well. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope my experience and tips with doing research can be helpful to you, whether you're a high school student all the way to PhD student. I think my general experience can apply to certain extent, of course. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And also check out my other videos in the academic topic, how to prepare your coursework, how to prepare for your exam, and things like that. All right, that's it for today. Before you go, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel ring the notification bell, check out my other videos that are more funny and lifestyle related, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!